Welcome everybody to part two of our series on how to value a company using discounted cash flow analysis. Today we're going to focus on the how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So in video one we looked at you know just discounting back future cash flows and I just gave you an interest rate to use as your discount rate and this video we're going to walk you through how to calculate that for a company and what you'll find is that every firm has their has a unique weighted average cost of capital and it really depends on the cost of their instruments and the amount that they issue in these various instruments so you know let's walk through the various steps here we're going to use Walmart today for our example uh, they're pretty simple uh, company to analyze because they're a steady cash flow generator which which I like so to determine a firm's weighted average cost of capital or their WAC we'll call it we really need two things we need to know what the underlying costs of the debt preferred preferred stock and common stock is of the firm what are the what are the underlying costs of these of cost to issue that debt and equity and then how much of that do they issue what's the relative weights for each so we'll walk you through both of these steps today so the cost of debt so there's a few different methods to figure this out now this is really the interest rate that they issue debt at so you know that you can look at the footnotes you can grab their financial statements I showed you um, in what well, you in, in an earlier video on this channel there is a video that walks you through how to get the financial statements and you can look at the 10k you can look at the footnotes and sometimes the company will just tell you right in there what's the average rate that they are paying on their debt number two you could take a look at the interest expense on the income statement this is what we're going to do today we're going to look at how much interest they're actually paying on the income statement and we'll divide this by the level of debt both short term and long term on the balance sheet so we'll use that method today another thing you could do is you know just grab a recent bond issue maybe the firm issued a 10-year bond in the last few weeks or last few months you know you can figure out what yield to maturity they issued that at and perhaps use that number you know as your estimate uh, Walmart happens to be in 2021 a double a rated company so they're gonna have a very low cost of capital double a you know you're talking well inside of 100 basis points uh, over the 10-year Treasury in terms of their cost of debt so um, the number we're gonna come up with is a little higher but you know that's that's something you could also take into account it's just what's their bond rating and what do other double-a firms issue at okay so that's debt and uh, actually let's go ahead and take a look at Walmart's uh, balance sheet and income statement so I downloaded their statements this is their balance sheet I've added some additional information here just to expedite our time but the interest expense that they've done so that's going to be on the in, that's on the income statement so you can see I've linked that to the income statement over here and that's in B12 so let's just check that out B12 over here is uh, let's see right here debt this is the interest expense on debt they also have interest on uh, capital leases they have some interest income so they they add all this up and they do a net number but I want to use just the the amount that they're using on the debt for our calculation so 1976 is the number and that's you know down a little bit from the prior year so and you, you can see just to make sure we see this so this is the year ending January 31st 2021 and then they have 2020 and they have 2019 so you can see their trend over time so we go back over here I've got that number here the total debt number so this one's a little more complicated because I'm actually going to use the average debt that they had during the year so I need both 2021 and 2020 balance sheet for this so you will see what I'm doing here is I'm adding B15 B19 and B23 so so what's that short-term borrowings you know uh, long-term debt due within a year and then long-term debt so I'm taking those numbers from 2021 I'm also adding in these numbers in 2020 the same number so long-term debt I'm adding that number in I'm doing long-term debt due within a year and I'm doing short-term borrowings and if we go back to the formula here I'm adding all that up and dividing it by two so I'm really just taking what's the average amount of debt that they had on their balance sheet during the year ending 2021 January 31st 2021 it's the average amount of debt they had at any one given time so I take the interest expense I divide it by that number and I get a number of 4.2 percent now today as I'm, as I'm doing this video in November of 2021 the 30-year Treasury is at 2 percent uh, Walmart's probably issuing debt you know maybe maybe at most 100 basis points over that number so they're probably going to be issuing debt closer to three percent 
but maybe they've got some other um, types of debt structures out there. Maybe they've got some bank loans, something else that's keeping that number higher. I'm going to stay with 4.2, but that's just a number to remember. The other thing to know is that this is tax deductible. Debt, interest expense is tax deductible. We're going to factor that in as well, so just keep that in mind. All right, the second thing we want to do is calculate the cost of equity. So let's go back to our PowerPoint slides. For this, we can use a few different models. What is probably commonly the most commonly done is using the capital asset pricing model. This is the equation for the security market line of the cap M. And uh, so it basically just says the expected return of uh, you know a company or stock is equal to the risk free rate. So for that we can either use say the 10 year or the 30 year treasury interest rate. Plus, and the, in, all in this bracket is what we call the market risk premium, which is the expected return of the market minus that same risk free rate. And in that brackets, we multiply all of that times the beta of the firm. Every firm will have a unique beta. So the beta is simply the relationship of the, you know, the stock price or the asset value to the overall market. So, you know, a high beta firm would be somebody, somebody like Tesla. Tesla's going to have a beta closer to 2. So if the market goes up on any given day 1%, you might expect Tesla could rise as high as 2%. That's kind of the relationship here. It's much more volatile. Walmart's going to have a low beta. And where can I find that data? Well, you can actually hop on a website, even like, uh, sorry, Yahoo Finance. I've pulled that up here, Yahoo. I, and this is in November 2021, you can see that they've estimated a beta here of 0.51. So, you know, they've done the work for you. They've done a regression analysis and calculated that relationship. You could do that work yourself if you wanted to. You probably wouldn't get a number much different than this if you use, say, five years of monthly data and regressed it against the, the market returns. So 0.51 beta seems reasonable. Uh, another number to keep in mind is their market capitalization. We're going to use that number too, $412 billion. So let's go back to our PowerPoint slide real quick. So uh, when I look at the rest of this, so I've got, I'm have i going to use a number of 0 0.5 here for, for Walmart. The market premium, we don't know what the expected return of the market is. We, we don't know that number. Uh, we can guess or you know look you know some people use historical data I don't recommend doing that I you know I think more forward-looking projections are the way to go fortunately there are some very credible asset managers out there BlackRock JP Morgan State Street Global Advisors that come up with long-term market forecasts and so I like to use those for the US equity market or the, or the global equity market uh, some number here from these firms if you take sort of an average of them uh, over 2021, they're they're kind of around that six seven percent range. Some are even lower. You'll you'll see estimates as low as four and five percent. I think maybe if we use seven percent here and we use a risk free rate of two percent, so the overall market premium of five percent, that seems like a reasonable number. Okay, so let's use five percent. Uh, and come back in 10 years, I may be using a completely different number here for this market premium. All right, so I multiply that 5% times the beta of, you know, 0.5, and the risk-free rate of being, you know, say the 30-year treasury today is like 2%. So that's kind of how we'll do that. So so let's um, let's check this out. Let's go back to to this page here. So so we, you know, so sorry. Let me let me let me just walk you through the equity cost of equity. If I do that for the cost of equity, if I use 2% for my risk-free rate, 5% for the market premium, and uh, 0.5 for the beta, I get 4.5% for the cost of equity. That may seem like a low number to a lot of people, uh, but I think it's probably a reasonable number to use uh, given where we are in the market right, right now. The cost of debt, we started at a number, we, we got a number closer to 4.25. Let's let's go back here and check that out. I guess we got 4.2. For some reason in my spreadsheet, I'm using 4.25. Let's just use that number. If I multiply 4.25 times 1 minus the tax rate, because remember, this is tax deductible, okay? So if I use that 1 minus the tax rate, I get a number of 3.32%. Okay, so... That's my cost. That's my after-tax cost of debt. Corporate tax rate today is 21%. Uh, percent. So we'll use that. 
Now I've got the cost of debt. I've got the cost of equity. Let, do they have any other instruments that they issue on their balance sheet? We can check that out. If you go down to their uh, balance sheet, all they've got is debt and equity. I don't see any preferred here, so there's no preferred stock to account for. All right. So now we just got to come up with the weights. So we've got the after-tax cost of debt. We've got the after-tax cost of equity. I got to come up with the weights. So the weights are, we want to use the market capitalization of equity. Not, not what's on the book, not book, not book value, but market value of equity. So I would need to grab the number of shares outstanding and multiply that by their stock price. I could get their shares outstanding from their financial statements. However, again, an easier way is just go right back to, to Yahoo and use this $412 billion. Just use that for the overall market cap. They've done the work for you. They've taken the shares outstanding and they've multiplied it by today's stock price. So we're going to use that number. And for the cost of debt, I'm just going to use the book value of debt. Book value of debt for Walmart is going to be close to the par value. Their bonds are trading around par. So <clears throat> I would just, in this case, it, you can see it's a different number here. Here I used an average of those two prior years. For the, for the book value of debt here, I'm only going to use 2021. So I'm just going to add up short-term borrowings. I'm going to add up long-term debt due within a year. And I'm going to add up long-term debt. And so if I do with those three things, that gives me this number here of $44 billion. So their total capital is just the sum of those two. If I want to then calculate the weight to equity, you can see all I do is I take this $412 billion and I divide it by 456. <clears throat> you can see right there, that gives me 90%. Their weight to debt will just be one minus that number. But just for um, for the heck of it, let's go through. The, the total debt is 44, you know, G13 is 44,533. I divide that by 456,533. That's uh, G14. That'd give me 10%. So these two will have to add to 1%. So now I've got it. I've got everything I need, really. So I just take my 10%, I multiply it by my after-tax cost of debt. This is my weight to debt times the after-tax cost of debt. This is my weight of equity times my after-tax cost of equity. And I get 4.38% for my weighted average cost of capital. <clears throat> you can imagine, you know, you're, you're, you're probably thinking that's a really low number. You know, a company like Tesla, which, which basically issues, you know, almost no debt. So they're going to be, you know, for all intents and purposes, 99 or 100% equity. Their beta, you know, they've got a beta of closer to two. If you want to look up Tesla, they're closer to two on their beta. So you would take two times 5%. That would be 10% plus another two. That's 12%. So Tesla might have a weighted average cost of capital of like 12% because they'd have no debt. 12%. That's kind of the range you're looking at in 2021 cost of capital. You're not going to find many firms with a lower cost of capital than Walmart. And you're not going to find too many out there that at least companies you want to invest in, they're going to have a much higher weighted average cost of capital than, say, 12%. So you're probably looking at some number between 4 and 12% of the year 2021 for your range of weighted average cost of capital. And most of your firms are going to be probably, you know, closer to 6 or 7%, I would guess. Okay, but this is going to vary over time. So that's how you calculate the weighted average cost of capital uh, for a firm. This is a number, you know, you will ultimately use and to discount back cash flows to come up with a valuation for the firm. And so I look forward to creating those future videos uh, in the rest of this series. So if you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up or please subscribe to this channel as I make videos all the time in order to make finance fun for students. Thank you.